Good morning and welcome to worship. Yes, welcome to worship in the name of Jesus, our great deliverer. May he watch over and bless us this morning as we worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Lord, have Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts filled with thanksgiving. You have given our land good weather and allowed the farmers of our land to plant their crops. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would now send continued good weather, sunshine and rain at appropriate times so that the fields may grow, the gardens may prosper to the delight of many hearts and souls. But above all, O oh Lord, may we ever approach you with thankful hearts, recognizing that we are dependent upon your grace and mercy, and that every gift, every good gift, comes from you in heaven above. All other prayers we then ask you, O oh Lord, to grant to us by your grace a grace founded upon Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit are one God forever and ever. Amen.
Our first scripture lesson this morning on this Sunday after Ascension is taken from Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Paul's prayer for the Ephesians and for you and for me is that we might grow in spiritual wisdom and understanding so that we might rejoice both in our calling from God and our inheritance of heaven. Both are tied to Jesus who sits at the right hand of God, ruling over all things for the benefit of us, his body, the church. Ephesians 1, beginning with verse 15. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So far our first reading. We continue with our antiphonal psalm. and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us he who sits in the heaven shall laugh the Lord shall hold them in derision. Great are the works of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Great are the works of the Lord. I will declare the decree said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Glory be to the Father,
Our second lesson is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 33 to 39. Jesus here foretells his ascension, a reality inconceivable to those listening to him. He then goes on to encourage all to come to him and to believe in him so that they might have living water flowing from their hearts. He was speaking of the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit received by faith. John 7, beginning with verse, or verse 33. Then Jesus said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer, and then I go to him who sent me. You will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come. Then the Jews said among themselves, Where does he intend to go that we shall not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is this that he said, You will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come? On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So far our second lesson, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please rise and join me in confessing our common faith in the words of the Apostolic Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. The word of God we're going to consider this morning is taken from the book of Psalms, the entire 42nd Psalm. As a deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me, Where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise you for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mizar. Deep calls unto deep. At the noise of your waterfalls, all your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. So far our text. In Christ Jesus, to whom we can turn with confidence in any crisis, dear fellow redeemed. There is quite a story behind Psalm 42, and we will address that story in the main body of the sermon this morning. There is, however, quite a story behind the hymn that you also just sung when in the hour of utmost need. That hymn was written by a gentleman known as Paul Ebert. He was a younger contemporary of Martin Luther and in fact attended the University of Wittenberg under Martin Luther. He later became a tutor at that same university and a professor, dealing particularly with languages. As a young man, he was involved in an accident involving a horse, and he was physically deformed from that point on for the remainder of his life. But his mind was sound and he loved language and it is said that second to Luther, he was the greatest of the Reformation poets. He wrote this hymn for Ascension Day, 1547, just weeks after the Lutheran forces had been defeated by Charles V and the Catholic forces at the Battle of Mühlberg. His elector, Duke John Frederick was imprisoned at this point, and Charles V had given him a choice between converting back to Roman Catholicism or losing all of his lands and his titles. Because his lands included Wittenberg and the university there, the future of the Lutheran Reformation was in jeopardy. And Paul Ebert wrote, when in the hour of utmost need, where do we turn to look for aid? Well, there are 
crises that confront each of us in our lives from time to time as individuals and as a Christian congregation. If you look on the back page of the bulletin this morning, the Board of Finance has presented you with what some would consider a crisis for our congregation this year. But there are individual issues, health issues, relationship issues, finance issues that may well be confronting any number of you. In the end, the same question is asked, whether by a Paul Eber or by you or by me, where do we turn when in the hour of utmost need? And the psalmist responds, you turn to your God. You remember your God. The psalmist writes, as a deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before you? My tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me, Where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them in the house of God with the voice of joy and praise. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the heights of Hermon and from the hill Mizar. In order better to appreciate this psalm, we need to understand the story behind it. Students of the Bible believe that this psalm was either written by David for the sons of Korah, who were the musicians in the worship center of the tabernacle of that day, or by one of the sons of Korah with reference to David. But all of them agree that it was written within the circumstances that developed during the time of Absalom's rebellion against his father. At that point, David and those people loyal to him, including the sons of Korah, were forced to flee from Jerusalem. And what made this an even more tragic situation was David's misplaced love for his rebellious son Absalom and the treachery of David's former best friend and confidant Ahithophel. It was in this crisis when David and his supporters were leaving the city that the psalmist speaks of David remembering his God. And he thereby instructs us as well that when we find ourselves in that hour of utmost need, we too want to remember our God. But what should we remember? Well, we should remember both who he is and what he has done. Our God is almighty. That means with him, all things are possible. Here was David, an older man, leaving the city with all of his people, fleeing from the hands of his own rebellious son. And yet David could remember a God who could do any and all things, even in the midst of a situation where those opposed to him could say, where is your God? David could say, my God is in the heavens. My God rules over all things, even in this thing. And he is loving, and he is merciful, and he is just, and he will not allow his children to go unattended but he will indeed rescue them. David could think back to that time as a young man, he was picking up pebbles out of a stream in order to go out and to face a giant known as Goliath. David could remember the times when he was chased through the wilderness by Saul, even cornered in a cave, and yet God protected him and delivered him from it all. And my dear friends, 
we too, in the midst of our troubles and our crises, can turn to God and remember him because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. He sits at God's right hand right now, exercising that power on our behalf. And with David, we in the past have come together as we have today to sing our praises to that powerful, that merciful, that gracious God whom we can remember in our times of crisis and know that he will be near us to deliver us. Yes, what should we do when in the hour of utmost need we should remember our God? and we should pray to our God. The psalmist writes, Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemies? Yes, David and those who were with him were fleeing for their lives. And yet, on David's heart and proceeding from his lips were prayers to our God. And when we face our most serious challenges, that is exactly what we want to do. In his prayer, David says, God, it's as if I'm out in the middle of a sea with the waves rushing over my head. It felt as if he were drowning, and yet he knew he could count on his God's loving kindness. And he was able to say, God remains my rock in the midst of this disaster. David thereby lays out for us a pattern that we too should follow. In the midst of our crises, may we turn to God with confident prayer, knowing that he remains our rock, the one who will stabilize the situation and rescue us in it. In the meantime, as David and his followers were fleeing Jerusalem, God was indeed at work in response to David's prayer. Absalom had strutted into Jerusalem with his followers. He had established himself as king in an immoral way. And now he called his counselors to seek advice as to how he should proceed. Should he go after David immediately, defeat him, or should he hold back and wait? Ahithophel, David's former best friend and confidant, stepped forward and said, Absalom, you need to follow your father right now. He is in disarray. You will be able to defeat him and crush him, and the kingdom will be yours. And then Absalom called forward another counselor, Hushai, a man who was also one of David's counselors, whom David had planted in Jerusalem to counteract the advice of Ahithophel. And Hushai said, yes, I too will serve you, Absalom, but Ahithophel's advice is wrong. Your father is like a she-bear who has been deprived of her cubs. He's a dangerous man. He's a general. And if you go out now and would perchance falter in battle, all of Israel will forsake you and return to David. Wait and gather the nation. Go as an overwhelming force and then crush your father. And Absalom followed the advice of Hushai. Interestingly enough, the traitor Ahithophel then went out and committed suicide. And we're told immediately after Absalom's decision in the book of 2 Samuel, the Lord had purposed to defeat 
the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring disaster on Absalom. My dear friends, when we are in the midst of our personal or our congregational crises, we are never alone. We have the Almighty God watching over us and listening to us. And even as he was guiding David's feet and plotting Absalom's fall, so he will guide us and overcome those opposed to us. There are times when we face crises of our own making. Poor decisions, sins that we have committed bring unfortunate consequences into our lives. At those times, let us not be proud, but rather let us humbly confess our sins before our God seek his forgiveness, and then go forward determined to do what is right and so to receive his blessing. There are other times when crises come our way because of what others have done to harm us. And in those situations, may we forgive one another and may we go forward simply seeking the guidance of the Lord and trusting in his loving kindness. Yes, what should we do in the hour of utmost need? Remember our God, pray to our God, and finally praise our God. The psalmist writes, Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. The psalmist here presents such a wonderful thought, a thought that would be completely impossible and unthinkable were it not for the faith that the Holy Spirit had placed in his heart and that he likewise places in our own hearts. For Paul here speaks of the bottom line in any situation when he says that ultimately we must hope in God. In the midst of any crisis, we can praise God for the help that we know he will provide and he must provide in view of what he has promised to us. Yes, hope in God. And as I mentioned, go forward humbly. Go forward trusting. Go forward praying and loving the enemy as well as your friend, for you know that God will be with you. David was willing to put himself entirely in God's hands, and you know what happened. I would imagine most of you could tell me the rest of the story. Absalom, a vain young man with long, thick hair, was riding through the woods down by the Jordan, but got lost, separated from his troops. He ran under a low-lying tree, got hung up in the branches, and his donkey went forward as he hung there in the air, his hair, his head caught in the branches of the tree. And we're told that Joab, David's general, came and ended his life, and thereby ended the rebellion. For David, it was a sad day in the midst of victory, for he had lost a son whom he truly loved. And yet God's will was done, and David was restored to his throne, and the people of Israel were blessed by many more years of godly rule. Paul Bear, 
all the fortunes for the Lutheran Reformation changed relatively quickly. Charles V was defeated in a battle some years later. The Peace of Augsburg was instituted and the Lutheran Church was free to preach the saving gospel unhindered by its foes. For you and for me, well, the troubles that we as a congregation may face financially or in any other way are but passing matters as God does his work and completes his work through us. And as we deal with the issues of our individual lives, again, let us hope in God. Let us wake up each day and praise our God, can serve him, and in which we can receive his blessing. Our lives, as long as we live them in this sin-filled world, will be lives in which we will face troubles and crises of any number of forms. And yet God remains the same in heaven. And even as the deer of which the psalmist speaks, which pants for the water brook, so may our souls pant for and be refreshed by our Savior God. May it be so among us. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. May we thy bounties thus as stewards true receive, and gladly, as thou blessest us, to thee our first fruits give.
This morning, in addition to our general prayer, we offer a special prayer in anticipation of our Memorial Day celebration tomorrow, a prayer thanking God for the blessings of those who have passed before us, especially those who have served our country and preserved our freedom. And then also we were informed this morning that one of our former members, Glenn Hasse, will be undergoing bypass heart surgery on Tuesday. He apparently was not feeling well earlier this past week, went to the doctor and was immediately admitted to the hospital in Eau Claire because it is a very serious situation. And so we include Glenn in our prayers this morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we live in a world that is filled with sin and the consequences of man's rebellion against you. The results at times can be frightening as your children face crises both individual and corporate. O oh Lord, move us at all times in our lives, but especially when pressured by Satan and this world to turn to you. May we remember who you are, our all-powerful and yet merciful God. May we lay before you our every concern, knowing that you will respond appropriately and that your peace may then settle our hearts. Move us, O oh Lord, to hope in you and to rejoice in you regularly putting on the righteousness of our Savior, exercising our faith and utilizing your word and participating and receiving the blessed sacraments of your Holy Scriptures. Grant that we may be strengthened in our fervent faith and hope. And we pray, O oh Lord, for your deliverance. May we patiently follow you all the days of our lives. We also come before you today, O Lord, in anticipation of Memorial Day tomorrow. And we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifices given by so many in our country throughout its history, sacrifices made to preserve our country and the freedoms we enjoy. We thank you, Lord, for those sacrifices and those freedoms. And we pray that you would comfort the hearts of those families who suffered loss. We pray, O oh Lord, that we might ever appreciate and exercise our rights responsibly under the guidance of your hand. And we pray as well, O oh Lord, and thank you for the gift of all those who have passed the works, the words that have touched our lives and enhanced those lives to this day. And we rejoice that one day there will be a joyous reunion in your presence in view of your grace and your work of redemption. We pray, O oh Lord, for Glenn and ask that you would be with him and with his wife Bev and their family Grant, O oh Lord, skill and success to the surgeons who will perform the surgery on Tuesday. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would sustain Glenn's life and increase his health and restore his strength quickly following the surgery. May his family turn to you and trust in you and find great comfort in the promises you have given your dear son, Glenn. All other petitions, O Lord, we ask in the words you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.
Please rise for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Good morning once again. Thank you for coming this morning. We hope you've been encouraged by what you've heard and sung. Uh, I would remind everyone of the Memorial Day service out at Pilgrim's Rest uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And then for the choir members or anyone else who would like to sing in a choir for that uh, Memorial Day service at the cemetery, if you would meet up by the piano here after church, we're going to be singing uh, two two hymns, one very familiar and one that we learned recently that's very simple, uh, but we will review those. Uh, Mr. Fisher is not here today. He will be our director tomorrow. Uh, he is in Sleepy Eye, I believe, this morning, uh, or in New Walm, one of the two. Uh, but he will be meeting at the cemetery tomorrow, a half hour before the service, so that we can go over them with him. Uh, there will be no church choir practice this coming Thursday. That may well have been in the the on-screen uh, announcements, I'm not sure. Then also the pictorial directories are here now, and they are on the two tables that are to your right as you go out the main door. And if you could pick those up, your names are on them uh, this morning. Then also, my wife noticed this morning that the address directory that was in the narthex for changes to addresses are, is no longer there. And that's rather vital as we update our addresses for the directory now in June. So if anyone has seen that, uh, uh, please uh, return it to the, 
to the uh, narthex and if you do have a change in address there is another one out here by the back door and you can fill in that change uh, in that directory at the back door those are the announcements may the lord be with you and bless you with a rest of a gorgeous day <laughs>